Okay, so here are the main, the main detailed results. And I would say there's two of them. Uh, one is telling you the training dynamics, and one is training you what happens on initialization. So there's the training dynamics. And one is telling you what happens on initialization. I'm going to make a little table here comparing it to what we've done before in the uh, in the feature regression. So in feature regression, in feature regression, there's one kernel k that does both of these things at the same time. So there's k of x, x prime, which is the average over the features, phi x transpose phi x prime, and it is responsible for both of these things. So it tells you what happens on initialization, and it tells you the training dynamics and how things evolve. That's uh, for feature regression. It's the same thing twice. But for the neural networks, or wide neural networks, wide neural networks, there's two different kernels. Uh, one kernel does the training dynamics, and one kernel tells you what happens on initialization. And they're different. So the training dynamics is some kernel called the neural tangent kernel. So let's delete this. Uh, so some kernel theta, which is called the neural tangent kernel. And there's a different kernel, I'm going to call it sigma, uh, which some people call the NNGP, which stands for a Neural Network Gaussian Process. So NN Gaussian Process. The NNGP kernel, some people call it the conjugate kernel. Conjugate kernel. And it tells you the covariance of the, of the network on initialization. And uh, both of these things are quite a bit more complicated than they were before. So uh, you can write the neural tangent kernel in terms of uh, the features, where we think of the features as being the gradients of the network. But they also have like an explicit formula that you can get uh, just from the network architecture. So uh, these have nice formulas, although they're somewhat complicated. So they're explicit formulas, and they're recursive. So the same way that a, a neural network is defined where the output of each layer is defined in terms of the previous layer, uh, the neural tangent kernel and the NNGP kernel are, are really the the things at layer L plus one, and you can define them at every layer L. So these are going to be the two main results. Uh, one is going to say the neural tangent kernel drives the training dynamics, um, and the other one is going to say that the NNGP kernel tells you the distribution at initialization. And it turns out that the uh, neural tangent kernel depends on the NNGP kernel. So you have to define that one first, and that is what I'm calling a Proposition 20 in the notes. So let's uh, write down what is Proposition 20 saying. Proposition 20. So everything that I'm going to say about now is true in the limit that the layer widths go to infinity. So for a, any fixed finite network, it's not going to be exactly true. But as the, the widths get bigger and bigger, it's more and more true. So what's true? So so when I write f, I really mean the limit of f as these uh, widths go to infinity. Um, so what's true is for any point x, so this is the NNGP kernel, and uh, the, the formula is for the distribution on initialization. Okay, uh, so for any point x, the following is true. The expected value of L x theta 0. So this is 0. So this is the output of the Lth layer of the network at initialization. So it's mean 0, it's variance, is this sigma l of xx, where si sigma l is going to be the NNGP kernel for the elf layer, and f of l is going to be Gaussian. f of l of x theta 0 is Gaussian. So this is the, the same kind of statement as we had before for initialization of the uh, feature regression model, and now it's true for the neural network. And there is an explicit formula for sigma l, and sigma l evolves like this. Uh, so the recursive formula for sigma l is sigma 1 of x, x prime is this. So it's a simple inner product. Uh, that's the first layer. And then to get the l layer in terms of the l minus first layer, you use this formula.
Okay, so sigma w squared and sigma b squared are those coefficients that were in front of the weights and biases. And uh, to get from sigma l minus 1 to sigma l, you use this expected value formula that depends on the nonlinearity phi of the network. So phi is the nonlinearity non of the neural network. Uh, okay, and what are these random variables z and z prime? They're exactly distributed according to the layer from the previous version, from the previous layer. So z and z prime are Gaussian, Gaussian, let me write it like this. Uh, let's let's put them in a vector. Uh, z and z prime are Gaussian with mean zero and the covariance matrix that looks like this: sigma l minus one of x x, sigma l minus one of x x prime, sigma l minus one of x x prime. This should be an x prime x prime. And this is a l minus one of x prime x. So to go from one layer to the next layer, you're doing an expected value of applying the nonlinearity to uh, Gaussian random variables that are distributed like the kernel from the previous layer. And that gives you the kernel for the current layer. Um, and so this Gaussian, this Gaussian uh, distribution propagates through the network. And at any given layer, you have a Gaussian and its covariance is getting updated in this funny way by using this formula. And so we'll see in the proofs uh, how this goes. And okay, here I've written it for one point. Of course, it's true for any arbitrary number of test points. So sometimes people call this property uh, being a Gaussian process, like we talked about before. So the output of the network on initialization is a Gaussian process, and its covariance is given by this, this uh, sigma L. Okay, that's the NNGP kernel. That's the NNGP kernel. And uh, there's another kernel called the neural tangent kernel that is going to drive the training dynamics. And I will put that one in another video.